Okay, so in this video we're going to solve a transportation problem using the transportation simplex algorithm. And so if we look at the variable names and the constraints, we can see that there are uh, three sources and two destinations. So let me draw a box here that sort of keeps track of all the information that uh, I'm going to be interested in. So um, based on the objective function, the objective function tells us how much it costs to send one unit from source one to destination one, that's this two. So I'll put kind of a two up here to denote that in the, in the upper left hand corner of this box. Similarly, it costs uh, one to uh, send from source one to destination two, so I'll put a one in the upper left hand corner of this box. And similarly, I'll, I'll put the rest of the cost. So this will be a three here, this will be a four here, this will be a five here and a six here. Okay, and based on the constraints, we also see that um, source one is producing 10 units. So let me write a 10 here. Source two is producing 15 units. Source three is producing 20 units. And destination one is requiring 30 units and destination two is requiring 15 units. So to start uh, the transportation simplex method, we need to find uh, an initial basic feasible solution. So we're gonna do this using our algorithm in the, the northwest corner rule. So I'll go up into this northwest corner and note that um, source one needs ten. Source one produces ten units, and destination one needs thirty units. So the minimum of those two is uh, ten. Sorry about that. Ten, um, and then that will remove row one from consideration. Uh, and then I'll go down to row two and um, uh, row two in column one, and uh, source two produces fifteen units and destination one um, still needs 20 units, so the minimum of those two is 15. Is 15. And I'll continue going in this way. Here, uh, I'll write a five, and here, I'll need 15. Okay, so 15 here. So the next thing to do is to check for optimality. So in order to check for optimality, we need to check if cij minus uh, these ui minus vj is greater than or equal to zero for um, all of the all i and j and furthermore we know that cij has to equal zero for the basic uh, for the basic variables for the boxes corresponding to the basic variables so because of that we can solve for ui and vj um, we'll have we have uh, five ui and vj that we need to solve for and we have four equations for the basic variables so so we have one degree of freedom so i'll just let um, u1 equal to zero and once u1 equals zero we can solve for um, the other ui and vj so u1 equals zero if i look um, at c11 i need c11 minus u1 minus v1 to equal zero so c11 is two and u1 is 0, that means v1 should be 2. Now once v1 is 2, I can solve for u2 because c12 uh, minus u2 minus v1 has to equal uh, 0. So 3 minus u2 minus v1 has to equal 0. So that means that u2 is equal to 1. Uh, since v1 is 0, I can go to this uh, row 3 column 1 and uh, note that u3 needs to equal 4. Uh, and from here I can solve for v2. v2 needs to equal 2. Because 6 minus u3 minus v2 has to equal 0. And so now I can check the, the two remaining boxes to see if I'm at an optimal solution. So I can check uh, c12 uh, minus u1 minus v2 and c22 minus u2 minus v2 uh, and c12 is equal to 1, u1 is equal to 0 and v2 is equal to 2 so this is equal to negative 1 and c22 minus u2 minus v2 is 6 minus uh, 1 minus 2 so this is equal to 3. So uh, this box satisfies the optimality test but this box does not. So we're not in an optimal solution at the moment. So uh, what we need to do is we need to um, find an entering basic variable. And so the only, uh, the only box that doesn't satisfy the optimality condition is this uh, box row 1, column 2. So this is going to be our entering basic variable. 
So I'm, I know that I'm going to increase this variable. And now if I increase this variable to satisfy uh, the demand constraint for, for um, destination 2, I'm going to have to decrease this variable, this variable here. But then if I decrease this variable in order to satisfy the source constraint, the third source constraint, I'm going to need to uh, increase, sorry about that, increase this variable. And that's going to make me need to decrease this variable. And so um, the smallest uh, variable which I'm decreasing is uh, this box here. And that has a value of 10 and we're going to decrease it to 0. So my new basic feasible solution is that I'm going to uh, remove 10 from box 1, 1 and box 3, 2, and I'm going to add 10 to the, to the other two boxes. So my new basic feasible solution is going to be uh, 0, 10, 15. This one is still 0. It's not a basic variable. And uh, 15 and 5. And we can check that all of our source and demand constraints are still satisfied. And so now I can um, solve for UI and, v and VJ again at this, at this new uh, basic feasible solution. Right? So I, um, I uh, need that CIJ minus UI minus VJ is equal to zero for this new set of basic variables here. So let me write down the cost, uh, the cost in these boxes so that I can solve for UI and VJ. So here again we have one, one degree of freedom so let me set U1 equals 0 arbitrarily and this is going to allow me to solve for my other variables so here I think I'm going to get that uh, V2 is equal to 1 and once V2 equals 1 this means that U3 needs to be equal to 5 and once U3 is equal to 5 this means that uh, v1 is equal to 0, and once v1 is equal to 0, I can solve for u2 is equal to 3. And so now again, I just have to check whether the optimality condition is satisfied, so I need to check if c11 minus u1 minus v1 is greater than 0, and if uh, c22 minus u2 minus v2, sorry about that again, minus v2 is greater than or equal to 0. Um, okay, so c11 minus u1 minus v1 is equal to 2 minus 0 minus 0, so this is equal to 2, so we're good. And c22 minus u2 minus v2 is equal to uh, 4 minus 3 minus 1, so this is equal to 0. So the optimality condition is satisfied, so we're at an optimal solution. So the optimal solution is uh, x11 equals 0, x12 is equal to 10, x21 is equal to 15, x22 is equal to 0, x31 is equal to 15, and x32 is equal to 5.